So it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dan Montgomery, who is the president of the Illinois Federation of Teachers and my boss. So take it <laughs> away, Dan. Hi, Benita. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to see you virtually and be here. I am in a frosty, warm, balmy, 13 degree Evanston, Illinois. And um, uh, so I'm the president, as Benita said, I'm the president of the Illinois Federation of Teachers, and uh, I'm a high school English teacher by trade. I spent 18 years teaching at Niles North High School in Skokie, which is, uh, for my money, one of the best public school districts in America with an incredibly diverse population uh, and great schools and a very strong union. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to, in talking to, you know, Dr. Monique Rideau-Smith, our great leader of our Ed Issues program here at the IFT, who helped really drive this convening. And I give credit to her for helping uh, sort of push this agenda with me and moving me as a leader to, to re-engage on assessment in a way we haven't done enough in the last couple of years. Uh, so uh, in talking to Monique, you know, I told her this story um, I, I don't get to teach anymore. Unfortunately, I miss that. But every year or so, I go back to uh, my friend Pankaj Sharma, who's an excellent social studies teacher at Niles North, where I taught, will invite me back and say, you know, come, come and speak to my AP government class about, you know, teacher unions and what you do and politics in the state and those sorts of things. Um, so I was doing that right before COVID and, um, you know, take, take questions at the end from the students who were mostly juniors and seniors. And the student asked me a question that I don't think I'd been asked before in a forum like that. Uh, she said, um, you know, Mr. Montgomery, what's the biggest change you've seen in your teaching career, your, the biggest change in education? And without even thinking about it, I just said testing. And, um, you know, after that, I really started to think about what did I mean by that? And, and, you know, I explained my answer to her, but it is really true. I started teaching in my first school year was 93, 94, pre no child left behind. And uh, make no mistake, there was plenty of testing. Illinois had, I think it was the ISAT then, or maybe it was IGAP, one of those. It was ISAT, IGAP, and then there was Prairie State. And we've had the iteration of uh, many state tests over the years. Um, but there was no RTI. The, the, uh, the testing regimen, such as it was, just was not as oppressive. And then I was started to get involved at the AFT level on the program and policy council for K-12 education and like say maybe the early 2000s right after No Child Left Behind. And that was really the focus at the AFT for a long time. How do we grapple with this testing regime? And um, I, I think, you know, it's safe to say we, we didn't necessarily grapple with it well. Um, there were a lot of, you know, currents at the time um, there were, there were strong reasons to, you know, want to have a much clearer read on how, uh, especially our black and brown uh, students of other minorities, uh, students of different learning abilities, how they were all faring. Uh, but it was like a giant train that just started barreling down the tracks that none of us could stop. And, and I can tell you as a, as a rank and file teacher and teachers I still talk to today, uh, feel very much like they're not <laughs> at all in control of this train, that it is a train on which they are a passenger, uh, and, um, and that instruction, instruction has uh, really kind of gone out the window in favor of assessment, whatever that, that can mean. Um, uh, so I, I'm really grateful and I'm glad that we are, that the IFT, along with all the other partners that Benita listed at the beginning, the great academics, researchers, teachers, and students we've got here today, are really trying to re-engage on this uh, in, a, in a very significant way. Um, Linda Darling Hammond is, I, I'm on an AFT task force on the teacher shortage and um, Linda Darling Hammond was kind enough to come to our task force meeting a few weeks ago and did a presentation on the teacher shortage, what's driving the teacher shortage. And maybe she'll talk about it today, but one of the facts that struck me in the research was that teachers who leave the profession list various factors. Why, why did you leave? Why'd you leave? And as we know, maybe almost about half of new teachers leave within the first four or five years. Uh, and as I recall, and she'll, she'll correct this if I'm wrong, 
But testing and assessment was right up at the top, I think maybe the second or third uh, factor that people were listing. Um, and I would just say on the ground, that is consonant with what I experience when I go to visit our locals and talk to our teachers and staff in schools. Um, they're often in tears about with the frustration that they don't have enough time to teach before the next assessment rolls around. So that takes me to uh, maybe a more immediate reason why we're here. Um, the Illinois State Board of Education, as many of you know, uh, is looking at redoing uh, their kind of big accountability assessment regime. And Dr. Carmen Ayala, our state superintendent, who's a, a really good person, has said she wants to reduce the amount of testing that our students undergo. And we have said, you know, amen to that. We are with you 100%. Unfortunately, ISBE, the state board, put out an RFP and said, well, let's go to interim assessments and do interim assessments three times a year rather than one big end of the year assessment, the Illinois Assessment of Readiness. Um, we were very concerned about that. When we talked to our members, uh, they were telling us, look, if you do that kind of assessment, the reality on the ground is we will be testing almost nonstop uh, the way that those sorts of assessments are played out on the ground in schools. Um, so what we did and what you all did, and I'm really proud of IFT members and other organizations we partnered with, especially some parent groups, um, you know, sent thousands of emails to ISBE saying, you know, time out, hold the line. We, we want further discussion, examination of this. Um, and so ISBE did that. They, I think, you know, they, they got so much pushback uh, led, led by us and other groups uh, that they had to stop and say, all right, we're going to go back to the drawing board and get a lot more um, feedback before we go through with this. Now, I will tell you the... Um, you know, the battle is not won, <laughs> uh, or maybe the, that was a little skirmish we won to get some time, but the war isn't won, if you will. Um, you know, they, they did a survey, as our Illinois folks would know, our Illinois teachers would know, um, a really long, complicated survey right before winter break, two days before winter break, great timing to ask teachers to do a survey. Um, we didn't think much of that, but they're going to do focus groups, and there's going to be a March board meeting where they're going to quite likely act on, on this question about how to do Illinois assessments going forward. So that's all to say, this is really timely, really critical for us here in Illinois. Um, you know, uh, I, and I just, I'll, I'll close with, with saying that the, um, the title of this convening, where we talk about deep learning, um, you know, that, that often gets lost. It's hard to, to actually verbalize this as a teacher. But it's really true that when we talk about assessment, whether if I'm in a state circle with stakeholders, uh, reform groups, people that represent school administrators, whoever on the ground, it's always the teacher's job to try to pull back the discussion and say, Let, let's talk about learning. Let's talk about learning. Assessment doesn't exist as a, as a thing on its own, or should it, or why would it? If we're not really doing it in the service of learning, I learned to teach reading with a really great uh, professor at Northwestern by the name of Carol Lee. She's retired now. But let me tell you, when, when and that was a soul-changing, soul-turning class for me on many fronts with Carol Lee about reading, um, about, uh, about race in, in learning and education. We didn't talk about assessment per se. Right, we talked about how kids learn, what the dynamics, the structure of a classroom can be that's going to turn the soul of a child. And yes, there is assessment involved in learning, and you have to learn how to do it right. But I think at the end of the day, we we still have not got it right. We are at the end of a 21 year uh, testing regime. That's what I call it. It's not, it's not even assessment. It's not even, uh, it's not even a new way to teach or learn better. We're at the end of a 21 year long assessment regime that's dominated American education uh, for the worse in my estimation. So uh, I'm grateful to all of you being here. I'm grateful that we're re-engaging. I can commit to you uh, that this organization, Illinois Federation Teacher, Federation of Teachers is going to continue to put this issue front and center. 
Uh, and like everything we're doing now, really look using a racial lens to make sure how we're doing this and how we're thinking about this is lifting up uh, our fight to dismantle structures in education uh, that persist in, in racism or, or continue the racist structures we've had for, for so many decades. Uh, and finally, I'll say this too, as a vice president of the AFT, uh, and Monique and I have talked about this quite a lot, Jesse and I have talked about it, Stacy and I, we're going <laughs> to, I think the AFT can re-engage too uh, at the national level. Uh, there have been so many fights, so many crises we've had uh, in the last few years. I acknowledge that. And I think um, rightfully so, or understandably so, a lot of us have kind of moved to these other fronts. Uh, but um, there isn't a more important one right now for what's happening day in, day out in our classrooms and our kids uh, than this one, I think. So thank you for being here. Um, I want to thank all the panelists and folks who are giving their time on a Saturday.